Hey, what's going on guys? Tim Bratz here. A hot topic and a lot of discussions right now in the real estate world is around seller financing. So I wanted to do a video about how to approach a seller about seller financing, different types of seller financing, benefits, downsides, all that kind of stuff. But it's gonna be a pretty quick video. All right, cool, so let's get started. So what is seller financing? Seller financing is approaching a seller to be the bank approaching a seller to be your lender. So instead of you going out and getting traditional financing on a property, you could also get hard money from an investor or like a passive lender. You can get private money from a passive lender, or you can always approach the seller about it. And the beauty of approaching the seller is the seller is already comfortable with the property. They already know what the asset is and they have a level of confidence in that where worst case scenario, if you default, they take back the property that they're already comfortable with, right? So that's a pretty good start on that. I've also found the types of people that are willing to sell or finance usually fall in one of three categories. The first is they own that piece of real estate or they own that asset uh, because they bought it for an investment, right? They're, they're familiar with residual income. They like the idea of having passive ownership in something, they're doing something once and getting paid on it over and over and over again on it. So a lot of times they just don't want to manage the property anymore or they don't want to put more money into the property and that's why they're willing to sell. It's not that they're not, that they don't like the residual income, they just don't want to manage it and deal with the headaches of it. That's a great place for you to come in and say, let me take the responsibilities and all the headaches and liabilities off your plate, you be the bank and I'll make payments to you and pay you out over time. That's a great way of doing it. The second type of person who's usually willing to sell or finance is somebody who's already pretty wealthy, right? Somebody who's already got some money and maybe they don't need the money from that property. I'll give you an example. Somebody who was an owner occupant of a beautiful home up in the mountains of North Carolina was looking to sell. This guy had made millions and millions of dollars in a, in a traditional business and he was looking to sell his property. Didn't need the cash right then and there. So I made an offer on seller financing. Hey, will you be the bank, right? He owned it free and clear. He might've had like a little, a small um, uh, line of credit or something on it. But I said, hey, if I brought 20% down on this $3 million deal, that's 600 grand, would you carry back the balance at a 4% interest rate on a 10 year term? 30 year amortization with a 10 year balloon where I'll pay you off in 10 years. And guess what? He's in his eighties. He wanted some sort of residual predictable monthly income coming in and he was wide open to doing it. So he accepted my offer and that's somebody who is already pretty wealthy and understood the value of, you know, seller financing. The third person, which this guy also kind of falls in that category of is a traditional business owner. So a business person thinks in dollars and decimals, a business person is going to look at this as a business transaction. And if they can either get better terms or, or more money by seller financing the deal to you, chances are they're gonna be very open to doing that. So those are the three types of people that I would definitely focus on talking to on seller financing. People who own a property as a rental property, not their primary residence. People who own maybe a luxury property who already have money and business owners who own any sort of property. What types of terms can it look like with seller financing? Well, I talked to you about uh, a, a typical seller finance land contract, right? So this is like your seller being the actual bank and they're going to be secured by four things. The first is a first mortgage or a lien on the property. This is filed at the courthouse and doesn't allow you to either sell it or refinance it unless that lien is paid off. The second is a promissory note, which is not filed publicly, but it outlines the terms of your agreement. Hey, it's going to be you know, $300,000 at a 4.5% interest rate on a 30-year amortization with a 10-year balloon payment or whatever that ends up looking like. The third thing is you're going to give add them to your insurance. They're going to be additionally insured. So if the property burns down, they get the first $300,000 so that way they can get paid off. You get anything above and beyond that. And the fourth thing is going to be title insurance ensuring them that there's not going to be any other title issues. There's nobody else that uh, has rights to that property or anything like that. So that's traditional seller finance or a land contract. And in that scenario, you can do that if they own the property free and clear. But what happens if they still have a loan on the property? So you got to be careful because 
if they go down this road, it could trigger a due on sales clause in their in their whatever their current mortgage and current promissory note paperwork looks like with their current lender. So you have to be very careful, make sure you read that, have an attorney read that and review that before you go down this path. But what I've seen in the past, if there's no due on sale type clause for, for transfer of um, interest in the property, then you have a couple other options. The first is a lease option. So a lease option is essentially you getting a lease or a master lease on the property and actually you don't need the property paid off and this wouldn't trigger it. It just gives you an option to buy it at a certain price in the future. So the lease is you coming in and renting the property at a certain rate. Let's say you rent uh, this house for, for uh, $1,500 a month, but you can go and put it on the market and you can rent it for $2,000 a month. You can arbitrage or make a spread on the rental difference, right? So it gives you a master lease on the property and you can now make a cash flow on it. And it also gives you the option to buy the property at a certain price point in the future. So if you give them an option, it doesn't transfer interest to you right out of the gate, but it gives you the option, hey, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be managing this property and operating this property for the next five years. I wanna be able to buy it for $200,000 within any time in the next five years. And, and if anybody else tries to come in and buy that property, you have essentially first right of refusal on that property and being able to buy it at $200,000. So you could potentially market it. <laughs> so you could potentially market it for $275,000, have a buyer that wants to come in, and then that way you can close on it at 200 grand, sell it to that end buyer at 275,000, and then you can walk away with a $75,000 check and any of the spread that you made on that property over the course of the past few years. So that's a lease option. And then the final one would be an installment contract for deed. So this is kind of like a car loan. You don't get the title to your car until you pay it off in full, right? So you make payments, 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 and the lender essentially maintains ownership and title to that vehicle until you pay them off in full, then they send you the title. An installment contract or an installment contract for deed works very similarly. So the seller would maintain the, the title to the property in their name and they give you an installment contract that says you make payments at this amount and over the course of the next two years you have to refinance, pay me off in full, at that time we will transfer title to you and into your name. So I've done multiple of these, I've acquired properties these ways and I've also sold properties these ways. So if you're looking to buy properties, understand that these are three new tools in your toolbox that you can utilize in a crazy real estate transitioning environment right now um, to get you into deals, right? Maybe you can pay the seller's price point if they offer you these kinds of terms because then you don't have to raise as much money. Maybe they can do it at a lower interest rate than a bank can. There's a lot of benefits to working with the seller on seller financing instead of doing it through traditional means. The other thing is if you're a seller, I'm a buyer and a seller right now, and I'm selling a lot of my properties these ways too. Realizing that buyers have kind of hit a ceiling, they're not willing to come up because they're concerned about what's gonna happen with the market, and sellers aren't really willing to come down on the values that they think their property's worth over the past, that they've been you know, hearing that the properties are worth over the past couple of years. So how do you bridge that gap? Well, one way is by me saying, hey, I need this price point, but I'm willing to carry back 20% of the down payment. You go and get a traditional loan for 80% loan to value. I'll carry back the other 20% and you pay me off in the next five years. That's a great way as a seller to be able to get your price point on the buyer's terms so it still makes sense for them, still cash flows for them, but allows you to cash out your investors, cash out your mortgage, and then carry some of your profits forward and then get that at three, five, 10 years down the road and make some interest on it too. And the other benefit is you don't pay taxes, um, capital gains taxes on that money until it's actually received. So there's a lot of benefits to doing that on the sell side. There's a lot of benefits to doing it on the buy side. Question becomes, who are you talking to? What are their motivations? What level of competency can you uh, convey these thoughts in? And if you can, and you can come to terms, make it a win for the buyer, make it a win for the seller and everybody else in the middle. You can still do deals and take down a lot of amazing projects 
in this market, regardless of what you're hearing on the news or in the media and all the other nonsense that's out there. So go out there, learn a little bit more about seller financing, creative financing, uh, strategies. We have a lot more on this Legacy Wealth YouTube channel about it. We also have Legacy Wealth Academy, which is 10 bucks a month, $9.95 a month. And uh, there's people talking about how they're structuring and financing and raising capital and creatively structuring, uh, creatively financing all different asset classes, self-storage, mobile home parks, Airbnbs, um, apartment buildings, obviously, single family, all the different strategies out there. So plug into that. There's a ton of resources there. And if I can ever be a resource to you, don't hesitate to reach out. Put it in the comments, any questions you might have about um, the, any of these topics, or shoot me a message on Facebook or Instagram, and I'll create a video and respond to you and give you a little bit more insights, point you in the right direction, offer resources and value any way that I can. So appreciate you. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share this video with anybody else that you might that you think might get some value out of it. Till next time, be your best.